Hi. Hello. Uh, so please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Whitney Gaynor. I am the CEO and co-founder of Synovia Technologies. And we print OLEDs roll to roll, like most folks print newspapers using a printing press. So these are your demos right here? Yes. What do we see? So we're looking at segmented displays. They're generally used to convey information from smart products to users. We have developed a proprietary material that allows us to print these OLEDs roll to roll using flexography, which is a contact printing method that essentially employs a giant rolling rubber stamp and defines the pattern of the OLED. So we can create these customized designs that are pixel matrices like you're seeing there, but also icons and logos and segments that are essentially any shape that the application requires. You say picture matrices? Pixel matrix, so that's what you're looking at there. So it's not an active matrix? It is a passive matrix. It is driven row by row. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this is your machine? That is our tool, yes. It is a eight-stage printing press. It is located in our clean room in San Carlos, California. And we've demonstrated print speeds of both 20 and 50 meters per minute, which is 20% of the top speed of the press. All right. Uh, is this the sheet? Yes. So this is one of our flexographic plates. It defines the printed OLED pattern. It is wrapped around a cylinder on our press, and it's used to stamp our material into patterns that we can then create OLEDs using. Uh, but uh, an OLED, mm -hmm. is it many different things in a display, many layers and stuff? Yes. So, so are you able to print a bunch? Or yes. So we print, this printing press has eight print stations in line, and so we're able to print five layers in our OLED. We transfer to a roll-to-roll -roll evaporation chamber. Everything is roll-to-roll -roll from start to finish. And then we evaporate our cathode and encapsulate. And so that's what we end up with here. Um, all of our OLED layers in a stack on top of each other and overlapping anode and cathode patterns to define the shapes of our OLEDs. And these are reliable? Yes, they are as reliable as other OLEDs. Um, we're using state-of-the-art commercial available light emitting materials. They have operational lifetimes of 10,000 hours to 50% brightness and shelf lives of around five years so far. And uh, with additional testing, we expect to get to a 10-year uh, operational field lifetime. How do you, how do you check the five years? You've been on we it use, for five years? <laughs> no, we use accelerated uh, thermal and humidity chambers to test um, encapsulation lifetime. All right. Um, it would be a dream if these kind of displays could be affordable. Is it possible? Yes. So yes, that is one of the reasons that we're using printing. So because we're using printing, we can put these materials, place these materials exactly where we want them with almost no waste. And so that's kind of a big deal when you think about how OLEDs are made right now using evaporation, where most of the material ends up on the interior of the chamber walls. We do not have that problem because we're directly printing. So you put exactly what's needed. Exactly what's no needed, waste. where it's needed. Almost no waste, exactly. And it's a thousand times faster, higher throughput than an evaporation process. And in addition, it all can be completely customized. So the tooling costs for a custom LCD can be in the you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, whereas this is very cheap and easy to create custom, even at low volume. And so that's really what we're targeting. Applications that today are not able to afford a high-end OLED display can now use OLED technology in their smart products. How much will it cost to make a custom Charbrox logo OLED? It depends on the size. We have a fixed cost per area, and it's going to depend on the yields. We're not entirely in mass production yet, so um, we don't actually know what our yield numbers are, but we can expect these things just to cost a few dollars. How about active matrix? Yes, we do believe in the future we should be able to print active matrix. Right now, there are no printable materials that have mobilities high enough to switch an OLED for an active matrix. But there are folks who are working on roll-to-roll -roll oxides and roll-to-roll -roll tunnel junctions, which we do believe will be compatible with this type of printing in the long run. And where are you based? We're based in San Carlos, California. All right. and. Uh are you famous already or no, a startup? No, we are not famous. We are a startup. Mm -hmm. And 
Is it cool to be here at the Display Week? It is very cool. This is our first time presenting at any conference of any kind, and so we're really excited to be here. And uh, here's uh, big companies around. Yes. And maybe they come and they have a look and they start discussions and say, uh, like, what's <laughs> yeah, we what, hope so. Uh, do you I have mean, some kind of discussions happening? Yeah, there have been a lot of people that have been interested in what we're making, how we're doing it, um, people thinking of different applications. We had a gentleman from a space company come by yesterday and said this would be cool for spacesuits. So uh, yeah, we, it's, been, it's been a really good experience so far. How's the uh, uh, power consumption compared to traditional right. display? Power consumptions are actually more similar to a traditional LED than an LCD. So if you're looking at a backlit LCD, you're going to put in, you know, four times the power for an eighth of the brightness as you would get with an OLED because particularly with these segmented designs, they're directly driven, so you can control them just by controlling the the input voltage or the current density. Um, so yeah, much more like LED power consumption than LCD. So ha one thing that I'm kind of expecting and is maybe some printing happening more and more in the industry. Mm -hmm. What are other people doing? And what you're doing is completely unique? Yes, so most folks who are printing OLEDs are using inkjet. And it's a very effective way of putting many, many, many small pixels down. Um, but in order to do that, you actually first have to use photolithography to define the wells into which you're printing. Our printing process is completely additive. There's no photolithography or laser patterning at all. And so we skip all of these batch processes in order to go roll to roll from start to finish. Cool. Uh, how soon, could, if, this, if there's a partner coming here and helping you to go as fast as mm -hmm. could be possible, how yes. fast could it go before this is like mass production? So right now we can do demos, we can do custom demos, we can print these structures on our tools. Printing full OLEDs, we expect to be, we, we've printed full OLEDs on our tools, um, we expect to be in mass production sometime next year. And the full active metrics? Like a few years down the road. Kind of I displays? Think. A few years down the road. Um, right now, one of the limitations, we can print down to about 100 microns comfortably. Flexography can generally go down to about 25 microns, and there have been some innovations in, in plate materials, specifically from Kodak, that are able to print much finer. And so I think between resolution and registration, those are the two things that really need to, um, we need to improve upon in order to get to, to that active matrix. And uh, one thing some people talk about on TVs is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not the dead pixels, but the, the burn-ins. Mm -hmm. Is there any burning risk on the way you do things? It's, I don't think it's going to be any more or less than other OLED technologies. These are still state-of-the-art OLED emitters that are commercial. Um, we get them through a material supply partner. And so, uh, yeah, I don't expect there to be any more problems with, with something like and this. And here, there's uh, like the inventors of the OLED walking around and everything. Oh, and yes. do, they, do they like uh, say, this is cool? Um, I actually have not met them, but maybe maybe they will. <laughs> right. So here, the display week, there's a bunch of 8K displays, there's 4K 120, and all these new TVs can come with HDMI 2.1, and there's a whole bunch of updates that I'm going to be filming at the Computex 2023 with the HDMI licensing administrator, which are organizing all the display makers, the cable manufacturers, and making sure that they are compatible with each other, there's a stable performance, there's no interference, and um, there's a smooth 8K future with 48 gigabit per second support. And there's the whole um, infrastructure for, for certifying, for testing, for making sure there's no interference with the, with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and stuff that people have. So thanks a lot for watching. Check out my HDMI playlist in hdmi.charbax.com.